we're gonna create this 3D card for your NFT project. It's gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so very easy to follow, even Michael can do it. What? Dear friends, fasten the seatbelt and open Blender. This is the default scene of Blender when you open up. Let's delete the cube. Now we have plenty of space to create the backdrop. So let's press number one. When you press number one, it moves the camera to the side view of the scene. Very simple. Press Shift A and add an empty circle. This box should show up. We're gonna add vertices to a 150 and then we can close it. When we add more vertices, the curve of the circle will be more smooth. Having this circle selected, we're gonna press R, X, and then 9, 0. This way, we rotated the circle by 90 degrees in the X axis. Now it's time to zoom in, and then press Tab. This way, we got to the edit mode, so you can see the vertices of the circle in here. Now it's getting excited, right? Um, so make sure that you have the Select Box tool here, and now we're gonna select all the vertices that are here, like this. Then press X to delete just the vertices, voila. Then we're gonna select the last quadrant of our circle, press X again and delete the vertices. Select the last vertex here on the bottom, then press E. Now you can see that we got this vertex extruded, so we can move it anywhere we want, but if you press X, you'll be able only to move it in the X axis. So let's just, just move it over here. And the same we're gonna do with the upper vertex here. So we're gonna press E. Now you can see that you can move it again, but this time we're gonna press the Z, which will give us the movement in the Z axis. So let's just put it here. Now we're gonna zoom out a little bit to see the whole picture. We can see that this vertex is still here and we're gonna just move it again all the way in the Z axis really, really high as much as we can. The same we're gonna do with the vertex on the X axis here. So let's just press G, then X, and now you can move it all the way to the right side. If you move the camera to the 3D perspective, you can see that we have this kind of U shape which will be the base for our backdrop. So now we're gonna press A, which will select everything. And then if you press E, you can see that we got all the points extruded. And again, we can move it in all the sides, but this time we're gonna press Y. So by pressing Y, we're gonna just move it only in this axis. And this way we'll create our beautiful backdrop. So let's just really, really make it nice and big like this. If you want to make the backdrop a little higher, again, we can just select those two vertices up here, press G, then Z, and then we can move it up as much as you want. So I think I like this. Again, I will do that also with the bottom part. Press G, X, so it will move only in the X axis and then just drag it a little further. If we press tab again, we will get out from the edit mode and the backdrop is ready. To make a card, we're gonna start with Shift A again, and we're gonna add a plane. If we press seven, we're gonna see the top view of our scene. Now you see why you have a numpad on your keyboard, because it's so essential when using Blender. We can press G now and move our plane a little bit further from the backdrop, so we can easily edit it. Let's zoom in a little bit. Then press Tab to get to the edit mode. Again, we can see all the vertices. I'm gonna press S for scale, and then we're gonna press X to just scale it in the X axis, so you can see that we can just move it very freely in this direction. And now we're gonna try to achieve sort of the size of the car that we wanted. So I like this one. Now we will move to modifiers, and we'll add the bevel. And now we're gonna make the corners of our car rounded. So let's add more segments. You can play freely with also the amount of the rounding. So if we do 0.15, we're gonna get a little more rounded card. When you are ready with the rounding, let's press tab again to get back from the edit mode. Now find this carrot facing down and click on it and press apply. This way, 
now when we get back to the edit mode, we can see that the roundings are now actually the vertices. And that's exactly what we wanted because now we're gonna add some thickness to the card. So let's press A again, then press E to extrude. Now you can see that we can make the card as thick as we wanted. This is probably too much. I think that something around this will go really nice. Now get out from the edit mode, pressing tab, and we are gonna move our card to our backdrop. The way I do these things is always going to some of the views. So if I press seven, we can see the top view. Now let's go out a little bit, press G. And now we can just freely move it around in the X and Y axis. So let's just press it somewhere here in the middle and then press three to see the front view. I will scroll in a little bit. To see our card from the front, just have it selected. Now we're gonna press R, then X to select the X axis and press nine zero. Now you can see that it moved to the vertical position and we're gonna do the last rotation on the Z axis. So let's press R, Z and then nine zero and voila, we have the card from the very front. Now press G. We probably want to have it a little floating in the air, so let's just move it a little bit up. And our card is ready. Before adding the actual lights, we're gonna switch the render engine. So go to render properties and switch to cycles. Okay, let's move a little bit out from the scene. We're gonna press shift A and we're gonna add a plane. That's gonna be our main source of the light. I will move to the top view by pressing seven. Press G to move it around. We're gonna move it right on the top of our card. Again, now let's go to the side view by pressing one and move the plane with the G keystroke all the way up. Now you can see that we have it just on the top of our card. As this is gonna be our main source of light, we can delete the light on here. So let's just select it and press X to delete. Now select the plane, go to materials, add a new one, name it light one, and then switch the surface to emission. So instead of the normal material, this plane now emits light. That's why it's called emission. To see how much strength we need to add, we can also go to the shading viewport, then zoom in a little bit just to see it more clear. Now we can play with the strength. So let's go with, let's say 30. And you can see that our scene got just lighter. Obviously we can also play with this later on as well as with the color. Let's switch to solid mode and we're gonna add two more lights in the same fashion. Okay, lightings are one of my most favorite part when doing 3D because you can influence the whole mood of the scene and it works really, really similar as in photography. So shift A again, we're gonna add a plane. Now this time we will place it on the side of our card. Again, we'll start with the top view and position it just to the side. Then go to the side view, pressing one, press R to rotate it in the X axis by 90 degrees. That's how we got it to this position. And we can leave it there just for now. Having it selected, we can press shift D to make a copy of it. So we can add another light source to the right side of our card. Again, we can press Y to just move it only in this axis. And when you are done, just left click to confirm it. We're gonna add another material to this. So let's just click new, name it light two, switch the surface to emission. And again, give it some strength. Let's do 15. We can also see it in the render preview, but let's just give it another color to see how it looks. So we're gonna go with some nice blue, select the other plane and edit a new material as well. Change the surface again name it light three give it it's some strength let's go with 10 and also change its color to a nice so the basic lighting is now done of course we're gonna move it later on to really polish and finish the final render but so far let's leave it like this and we are very good when we try to render the whole scene with f12 and we can see that it renders totally at the wrong spot and that's because our camera is pointing to a wrong place. Select a camera, which is now just over here. We're gonna go with seven to see the top view. Let's scroll out a little bit, press G to move it somewhere in front of our card. 
which is around here. Let's scroll in, go to object properties over here. Now you can see the rotation of it in here. Let's give it all a zero. And you can see that the camera is now pointing actually down, which is still not the direction that we want it. First off, let's fix the rotation of the camera so it doesn't point down. So we give an X axis a 90. So you can see that now it's pointing up but it is still pointing to a wrong direction. So if we change the rotation in the Z axis by 90, we get a correct direction. To see the camera view, we can press zero on our keyboard. If we scroll out a little bit, you can see that it is pointing in the right direction, but the camera is positioned too high. To fix that, we're gonna press my favorite number one to see the side view, then select the camera, press G to move it all around. And of course, if you press Z, you can move it just really down like this and again check the view by pressing zero we can also press g right now when we have the camera selected so we can move it around to really find the position that we want it oh let's make it instagram friendly there is so much empty space on the sides anyways so let's just zoom a little bit in go to output properties and change the resolution according to what you want we want a square image so we're gonna duplicate the y to the x so we're gonna go with 10 8 0 to get the square image you can see that the backdrop is not big enough but at the same time i can see that the camera is also too far from our object because it's fairly small so let's press number seven select the camera press g then X to move it only in the X axis. And now we can freely move in and out to fix the issues with the backdrop, but as well the size of the car. So let's try to move a little bit in, then press zero to check the viewport. I can see that it is still a little far away. So let's go to the top view again, press G, X and move the camera in. And this is our current render of the scene. First, we're gonna add a material to our backdrop. So let's click on it. Go to material properties, click on new, rename it to backdrop and change its base color to a really dark one. So we're just gonna drag this point all the way down to almost a black color. Then we're gonna add a spec color to 0.75 and we're gonna adjust a roughness also to 0.5. The higher the specular, the more shiny the backdrop will be. Now let's move on our card, click on it, add a new material again and name it card. It's base color gonna be a light gray and we will also give it a high specular value. So let's go with 0.85. If we switch to our render preview, we can see how the whole scene got more interesting. Getting the right look of the material takes some time so feel free to experiment change the numbers to see how it looks let's get back to solid mode zoom in and we're gonna add some details to our card so having it selected i'm gonna press tab then i will pick a face select in here i'm gonna select the front face then press i to insert by dragging the mouse in and out you can see that we got a nice inset into our fur on face so let's just stop around here. I will zoom in again to see the details. Now I'm gonna press I again to create another inset. Let's stop here. And now I will hold Alt on my keyboard and we'll click on this edge of the face in here. This way we select the border that's gonna shine later on. Now let's press E to extrude. Now you can see that we can either extrude out or we can also extrude inside which is more interesting. So we'll just get a little inside like this. And you can see that there is this border that got kind of extruded inside. And that's the one that's gonna shine. To make it shiny, we will add another material by clicking on this plus here. Again, create a new one here. And that's gonna be the shiny border. Again, we're gonna change its surface to emission. Let's give it a strength of eight and give it a nice color so we'll go with some kind of blue light blue color this card material was assigned to the whole object but in order to just assign this shiny border to these faces we're just gonna click assign while we had 
all those faces that we want to be shiny, select it. Get out of the edit mode by pressing tab and now let's check the render preview. You can see that it's pretty shiny, so cool right? Alright, let's make some fine adjustments. Let's get back to solid mode. First off, we're gonna rotate the card a little bit. Uh, press 0 to move into the camera view. Click on the card, move to object properties. And now let's change the rotation a little so the whole card is nicely angled towards the camera. We can do something around 65 degrees. That's a nice angle. Now we're gonna play with the lights to make it even more cool looking. Let's select the light on the top, go to its material and change its color. We're gonna go with this nice sort of pinky magenta and we'll try to reduce its strength to let's say 21. Then select the blue light on the right, press G, then Y, move it closer to our card. So, so let's place it really, really close to the card. And we can also adjust its color and the strength. So I'm gonna give it a seven. And then I will change this color to rather a violet. Then select the light on the left, change its strength to five, and also its color to this nice pastel color. I will also move the right light a little further. Press G, Y, and just drag it a little further away. Let's reduce the light on the top even more because it's a little too strong. So let's reduce the strength again to a better number. I will go with 12. And lastly, we're gonna change the color of the shiny border. Let's click on the card and now change the shiny color in here. Yeah, and this light blue is a perfect color. Look at how awesome it looks. I think you will like this part. Let's get back to solid mode. Select the card, go to object properties, find a rotation, the Z axis and press animate property, this little dot here. Let's drag the animation frames a little up. Okay, you can see that this orange dot was added on our first frame and that's the first keyframe of our animation. Then we're gonna move the frame to all the way 45 and then change the value of 65 to 100 and, and don't forget to press this animate property button again. This way we created a second keyframe. So now when we move our frame backwards, so we can see that the card is rotating as we change the, isn't that awesome? To let the card rotate back again to its original position and that way creating the loop, we're gonna move the keyframe all the way to 90. There, we're gonna change its number to 65 again and press the animate property. Now let's have a look how it looks when we change the frames. So you can see that the card goes to all the way 115 degrees. Then it moves back again on 90th frame. Don't forget to change the final frame in here to 90. So that way when we render the animation, it will stop here. Let's do it. Go to output properties and find the output section. Change the output folder by clicking on this icon to the folder that you want. So as we don't have any transparency in our scene, we can pick the RGB color. Make sure that the file format is PNG. That's why we're gonna render the sequence of png files but if you want a direct animation in the form of a video then change the format to some of the movie ones like the avi raw for example or avi jpeg the reason for rendering the animation sequence in pngs is because you can always stop and start the render process from the frame where you stopped so in case you want to start rendering the animation from where you ended last time, just make sure that you don't have this override checkbox checked. But the very final step of today's tutorial is gonna be rendering. So let's click on render and render animation. And this is our beauty in action. You can find all the files for download in the description. To see more tutorials like this one, hit the subscribe button. Tom and Michael are out. There is nothing more satisfying than a good cup of mint tea.